Welcome to Bloomberg ETF IQ Europe. I'm Francine Lacquan. Over the next 30 minutes will be your guide to the region's thriving market in exchange traded funds. Everything you need to know about the funds and the flows. Investors buy bonds, European exchange traded funds at 8.8 .8 billion euros over the past month with 50% going into fixed income will break down the trends. Despite a bumper month for FANG stocks, investors in Europe pull cash out of tech ETFs will ask if the technology rally is running out of steam. And green investments in the black, a 12th straight week of inflows for ESG exchange traded funds. Will 2020 be the year that the sector comes of age? So let's kick off the program with a look at what's been attracting the money over the last month. Well, despite big gains for FANG stocks, Apple shares rose 21 percent in August. Here in Europe, the tech sector saw net outflows. Instead, some of the more unloved corners of the ETF market made gains. Well, Danny Berger's here, and she's been looking at the numbers. Hi, Danny. Francine, yeah, really interesting over the past month, a very contrarian tilt to ETF investors, especially here in Europe. So as you mentioned, U.S. growth stocks, growth stocks really in general did very well in August, not to mention that banner rally from the FANG names. Even so, we saw U.S. Uh, growth funds and European growth funds throughout the globe get money pulled out of them. In fact, over August, we saw $2.4 billion exit growth funds. That's the biggest with monthly withdrawal in about five years. Now, if you zoom in just to European sectors and European funds, we saw tech have withdrawals, healthcare have withdrawals. And this is really in about face of what's been happening since the March bottom. Since the March bottom, investors have preferred technology. They have preferred uh, investing in healthcare. Yet August, again, as I say, that's not what we've seen. Instead, most of the funds uh, flows have gone into things like real estate and and um, uh, as well as materials. And really one way to look at this is just investors are betting where they think the next leg of the rally is going to go. They're avoiding some of the more expensive names that really lifted the market market in August and instead are saying for the final months of 2020, what is going to give us that booth? Is it going to be real estate? Are we going to see a rebound in those more yield play kind of names? Is it material? Will that do better getting 198 million euros worth of inflows? Well, that's certainly where investors are now putting their money over the past week, Francine. Danny, thanks so much. Danny Berger there with the very latest. Now joining us is James Bevan, Chief Investment Officer at CCLA Investment Management. Uh, James, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. When you look at the ETF market, specifically uh, the tech ETFs, how do you invest in it? Well, I personally anticipate that the tech sector has further to run. I, I know that a lot of people have determined that with a forward price earnings multiple of over 44 times, it's time to sell out, given that the peak of the dot-com boom uh, was when valuations reached 48 times. But back then, the 10-year bond yield was six and a quarter percent. Inflation was just fr shy of three percentage points. And a lot of people genuinely realized that those were that was a period of cash burn. Today, the leading tech stocks make enormous amounts of money. And I don't personally regard the valuations as extravagant. Uh, far be it, uh, indeed, uh, to decry those stocks as expensive, when many stocks in the rest of the index that don't have the growth credentials are still on heady multiples. Okay, so James, uh, tech ETF saw some, some outflows, net outflows. I mean, how does a tech ETF do different to, to actually, you know, a plain tech stock in Europe? Well, I, I think that the challenge is whether or not you are interested in having a, a sector impact, whether you are after security selection. And I think a lot of people have determined that it's incredibly difficult to tell the difference in the outlook for corporate earnings and share price returns for the tech segment. And on that basis, having a passive approach uh, is one way forward. That said, equally, it's uh, apparent that the market has been very pro-growth and quality. And tech, of course, reflects those style characteristics. People are also buying growth and quality 
exchange-traded funds in order to get a broader participation in the general theme of wanting accent to growth and uh, quality. But interestingly, that has also begun to reverse in very recent days. Um, James, are you expecting more specific or specialized ETFs when it comes to tech? Maybe parts of the market that have been unloved or just parts of the market that will continue to grow if you, know, you and I continue working from home? Yes, absolutely. I, I think that there will be far more difference in terms of the exchange traded front flavors that are brought to the table. Uh, equally, it's abundantly clear that within the tech sector, there's already very divergent performance and a number of companies that people regard as tech are not actually in the tech sector at all. So Amazon, as we all know, broadly regarded as a tech stock, uh, not least because web services is one of its uh, key divisions. Uh, and yet it is obviously not in the tech sector. Is there anything, James, that you're going to be buying if there's a resurgence of COVID-19 or, or if the outlook gets better? Is there, where do you find value in European ETFs right now? Well, I, I would say that it's appropriate to consider having a barbell approach to to maintaining a, 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 an approach to secular growth opportunities, some of which are thematic and could be expressed through exchange traded funds, uh, but always an accent on quality. And at the other end of the, uh, the barbell, if it is generally anticipated that the Federal Reserve's mandate is now to push to get inflation to go higher, I think it's right and appropriate that investors wanting to have balanced portfolios should contemplate having uh, utilities exposure because utilities are very well placed if there is a pickup uh, in inflation. And, and also, if Mr. Biden were to become the next president and were the Democrats to take control of Congress and the Senate, then I absolutely believe that clean tech and utilities generally will get a, a very significant leg up. James, thank you so much. James Bevan there from CCLA Investment Management stays with us. Now, coming up, a 12th straight week of inflows for ESG exchange traded funds. We'll ask if 2020 will be the year that green investing really takes off. This is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg ETF IQ Europe. Everything you need to know about the funds and the flows. I'm Francine Lacqua. Now, a key beneficiary of the rise in global stock markets over the past few months has been ESG funds that invest according to environmental, societal and governance principles. According to Morningstar, there are now more than $1 trillion in funds invested this way with ETFs in the sector, seeing a 12th straight week of inflows. Now, let's get more with our Simone Foxman. Simone, um, thank you for joining us. Has investor passion for ESG actually made its way into the European ETF space. Good morning, Francine. Well, of the $71 billion that's flowed into ESG investment products in the first half of this year, $61 billion of that went to Europe, and a, a little bit more than a quarter of that went to Europe ETF. So I say yes. Now, the big winners here have really been these broad screen products. Um, and to give you a sense of kind of the impact, I'll point to two of the big European-focused ESG ETFs, Lixor MSCI ETF. ESG leaders and X trackers to ESG screen. Both of these have seen more than $350 million worth of inflows, and that puts them among the top 10 Europe focused ETFs in terms of inflows so far this year. Really proving, I think, that ESG is right up there in terms of conventional products when we look at the European ETF space. Um, Simone, in the US, clean energy ETFs are trancing their peers. Do we see the same dynamic? Yeah, you know, I would point out that the uh, the clean energy ETF drive is really led by solar. Um, and so these solar ETFs, particularly when you look at someone like Invesco Solar, they have companies that are based in Europe. They're just listed in the United States. For example, that Invesco Solar, that has Scottech Solar in Oslo and Encavis in Hamburg. 
So the, the, the big ETFs uh, that are listed in Europe or focused on Europe really tend to invest around, uh, around green governance, I would say. So companies that are behaving well in terms of the environment, companies like Nestle and SAP often top those lists. Um, and a, a word of concern or, or something to watch for, I would say, is academics led by Elizabeth Diemer at the University of Waterloo, they've just come out with new research and really pointed out that the the impact of the actual ESG factor, the kind of rating that's given to those ESG companies, that only has like a one to three percent impact on how those stocks, and they measured U.S. stocks, how those stocks actually did this year. So ESG may be not the reason that you want to make an investment decision. They point to things more like risk, financials, industry that have that drive. That said though, you're seeing a little bit of a benefit here. Um, so certainly not a reason not to invest when you're looking at uh, ETF space more broadly, but perhaps uh, put that on the back burner or at least include that in some of your moral decision making. Well, Simone, thanks so much. Simone Foxman there with the very latest on ESG and ETFs. Now let's get more with James Bevan from CCLA Investment Management. James, is this a space that will just grow and grow? Oh, absolutely. I do think it will. And, and this largely reflects the expectation that people are waking up to the uh, clear and certain observation that uh, environmental, social and governance factors represent significant extra financial risks to shareholder value. So we are now entering an age where people not only anticipate that they can invest with their conscience, but also can make more money. Is there, I mean, how will ESG actually develop? It used to be climate change. Is it going to be climate change, but much more sustainability, diversity? Or again, are we going to have just many more ETF products? There will be a vast range of products, and you are absolutely correct to identify that climate change and the environment have led the way, in part because they are much more easy to measure. So it, it's relatively straightforward to assess the carbon intensity uh, of a portfolio, determine whether the assets held within the portfolio are consistent with the Paris Agreement on climate change. Social norms and governance are much trickier. So people talk about the need to have a proper diversity at board level, but different countries have different norms in terms of what is the preferred board structure. As for uh, the ratio of men and women and equal pay, I think there is a broad expectation that the world's best companies treat everybody equally. And if you don't treat everybody equally, sooner or later, your stakeholders in the form of your staff, your suppliers and your customers will rise up in revolt. And again, therefore, people have to get this right. We're cottoning on to how important this is, not just the society in which we live, but also the financial returns we expect for our investors. Um, James, how much of this is also underpinned by some of the efforts by uh, governments in Europe to actually just, you know, th this push, of, you know, towards sustainability? Oh, I would say that there is a very significant shift in government uh, focus in terms of sustainability and the environment. I, I would say that one of the big issues for the US, of course, is whether Mr. Trump uh, is uh, re-elected as president because he did commit to taking the US out of the Paris Agreement. Uh, if he is confirmed uh, as having a second term, the US will then leave uh, the Paris uh, commitment. In contrast, Mr. Biden has made it very clear that the environment, the green agenda uh, and compliance with the Paris Accord on climate change are centre to his policies. James, thank you so much. James Bevan there from CCLA uh, Investment Management stays with us. Now, up next, to despite soaring U.S. stocks, the iShares S&P 500 is one of this week's biggest ETF losers. We'll bring you what's hot and what's not. That's coming up shortly, and this is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg ETF IQ Europe, everything you need to know about the funds and the flows. I'm Francine Lacqua. Now, as momentum continues to build behind 2020's risk rally, investors are abandoning cash holdings at a record pace. The biggest ultra short duration ETF has seen 14 consecutive weeks of outflows as money comes off the sidelines and into stocks and riskier assets. Well, James Bevan from CCLA is still with us. James, how exactly do you see that dynamic changing over the next six to seven months?
Well, I, I would look back as to why so much cash flowed into exchange-traded funds that mimicked cash. And, of course, there were two factors. One was the huge uncertainty associated with the COVID-19 lockdown and uh, cessation of economic activity. And the second part were the simply enormous cash payments made by governments to support households, aided and abetted by central banks who bought assets and therefore liberated cash, much of which went into exchange-traded funds and money market funds. So that's where all the cash came from. And as confidence rebuilds, so cash is moving out. And I would say that uh, last Thursday's announcement by the US Federal Reserve on its policy agenda, that in effect it will work harder than ever to get inflation up, means that we should expect uh, low cash rates and low bond yields for a very extended period. And on that basis, people who want yield will seek it out in other assets. People who want to get a return in excess of inflation will have to take more risk. So I do think that we will see continued outflows from cash over the months ahead. And of course, people will take money out to spend because a lot of the money that flowed into ETFs was, in fact, money set aside that people were fully intending to spend when confidence returned. Um, James, do you see the, the European market actually changing compared to the US? I mean, Europe you know, is far behind the US, but do all these trends accelerate the transformation to, to make the ETF market grow? Yes, absolutely. I do think that the Europeans in some ways are further ahead of the states in thinking about the challenge that cash represents. After all, it was not many months ago that the US Treasury bond offered a return in excess of the domestic rate of inflation. Uh, Europeans have had to live with negative interest rates uh, and therefore very low bond yields and in some markets negative yields for an extended period, even if inflation has been low. But the low inflation has hit in the fact that for many people, the real cost of living has been rising on an ongoing basis. And therefore, people have necessarily been thinking to themselves, well, what can I do in order to protect my standard of living? What can I do with my hard-earned cash? And I think that they will continue to look outside of cash and have to take a bit more risk in order to try and achieve a bit more return. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, James. Uh, now, more from James in a minute, but let's also take a pause to look at the ETS, which are attracting the money this week, and Treasury's part of that story with your European leaderboard. Here's Danny Berger. Hi, Danny. Hi, Francine. Yeah, apparently over the past week, some ETF investors had a change of heart, and I say some because these are just two funds I have on the board, and a week does not a trend make. Well, yes, over the long term, they might be fleeing cash funds, but you can see one of the most popular funds over the past week is an iShares U.S. Treasury zero to one year fund getting $260 million worth of inflows. We saw another DECA U.S. Treasury 7 to 10 year bond getting $338 million worth of inflows over the past seven days. Now this is contrary to what we've seen over the past month but again there is some trickiness. This could just be some shuffling around of, uh, of exposure to Treasuries and what exactly type of fund and structure of fund that they're investing to. Number one on the leaderboard this week in Europe is an I shares China bond fund getting more than $400 million worth of investments. A couple factors here. One, China in local government bonds has seen a bunch of supply coming to market. 1.1 trillion yuan in August of local government bonds to be specific. So that could be a factor. BlackRock itself, which issues iShare bonds, owns iShares, of course, themselves said that they were now investing in Chinese bonds, government bonds across the spectrum. Let's switch it up and see some of the biggest losers this week and one of the reasons I said to take those treasury flows with a grain of salt because of course one of the biggest outflows here is another iShares 7 to 10 year U.S. Treasury bond. So again this could just be some reshuffling between different treasury related funds. Now interesting if you look at the number two and third biggest loser they're both equity ETFs. One of them is a German stock market ETF an iShares DAX one and an iShares S&P 500 ETF. Both losers losing more than $100 million over the past seven days. This one in particular I find fascinating. We've seen this trend among European investors where they've begun to pull money out of S&P 500 ETFs. And instead, what they're putting that money in is to NASDAQ 100 ETFs. So there's a clear preference from these investors. It's not just writ large getting rid of U.S. holdings. Europeans instead are more focusing in their investments into specific U.S. U.S. sectors. Francine?
Thank you so much, our Danny Berger there with the very latest on these flows. Now let's get some final thoughts from James Bevan from CCLA. James, how do you see that shift? I mean, again, August, August is, is usually more quiet than, you know, others. Um, how do you see that shifting as, as we enter the busy September, October months? To me, the big issues that lie ahead are what happens on the U.S.-China front. Uh, and there has been some rather better news that trade talks are re-beginning. But the rhetoric that has come out from both sides, I'm afraid, does not make me confident that we're in for a peaceful time and that were there to be a shift in the trade focus to a capital account focus, so who gets what capital in the global arena, then I think equities would uh, suffer and a more defensive profile uh, would be necessary. So I think that's a huge issue for investors. The other big issue, of course, is what happens in the US presidential election. If Mr. Trump is re-elected, uh, I think the markets will uh, generally celebrate. Uh, if Mr. Biden is elected, I think there will be a much more nuanced reaction because I think he will want to spend even more money than Mr. Trump, but it will be a much greener agenda. And therefore, the ESG ETFs that we discussed earlier, I think, will be significant beneficiaries. Uh, what about financial ETFs? I don't know whether a Democratic president means that we're going to see much more pressure on Wall Street. I think it's very difficult to become enthusiastic for financials writ large because this climate of ultra low interest rates uh, is very demanding for the banks. And the Federal Reserve's pronouncements last Thursday that it will pursue the increase in inflation for an extended period reminds me of what the world looked like uh, between 1942 and 1951 when bonds were capped 2.5%, inflation at one point went up to over 15% in the States. Bond investors had it really bad. I worry that that's where we may be heading in due course. James, as always, thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. James Bevan, Chief Investment Officer at CCLA Investment Management. So that's it for this week's Bloomberg ETF IQ Europe. We'll be back with more next Wednesday. That's 9.30 a.m. London time. This is Bloomberg.